for us, uh, he's a he's a he's a rapper, right? Uh, he's a reggae singer or something. Reggae singer. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But Sean Kingston. I know his mama was doing something, but you know we ain't supposed to be auto slamming black women like that. Did they have drugs or something? What What was it? What was I think it was. Mama? What What did they have? You know, you didn't read the story because you. I don't know, but they did something. No, I, I, I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to be too serious or nothing, but no, nah, we ain't slamming black women like that up there. Yeah, definitely don't do that. Black women. Not the mama. Now. <laughs> now, Sean Kingston, yeah, we'll slam that motherfucker, but we ain't slamming his mama, okay? We ain't going to do that, even if she is guilty. What about Wendy Williams? You going to slam her? No. I'm, 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 I'm Wendy Williams myself. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's time for Black History. Um, I think we'll be right back. Y'all, guess what? We'll be right back. This show is brought to you by Chris Castaneda with Mortgage Right. Tired of throwing money away on rent? Escape the cycle and start building real wealth. Chris can help you land the perfect home loan for your unique situation. Whether you're a first-time buyer or looking to upgrade, we'll guide you every step of the way from pre-approval to closing. Contact Chris today to get started. And we're back. Y'all, guess what? Um, y'all know I'm a real estate agent. I'm going to start talking about it more and more and more in the very near future. I'm going to start showing all my um, listings to y'all and everything so y'all can decide if y'all want to try to buy something. You can get to call me and talk to me. Come out here to Texas because that's where it's at. I don't want people moving here. I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. I'm like. That's how you sell more houses. People I know, here. but I don't want people to move here. Uh, I like San Antonio the way it no, was. I agree. I agree. Like they just it's turning into Dallas. It's turning into Houston already. Mm-hmm. When I moved here, it was only seven percent black. Now it's fourteen percent black. Can you believe that? Oh wow, that's a huge increase. And I, I and I made that happen myself. <laughs> <laughs> I raised the goddamn population percentage myself, <laughs> like a Mexican. I was just playing. <laughs> y'all, it's time for Black History, y'all. Let's see who's on Black History. Okay, that's not Black History. That's motherfucking. This is Black History? Okay. Interesting. George Robert Carruthers is this guy's name right here. He probably did something amazing. You know what I'm saying? All the black I people. I remember are here. his name for some reason. Yeah. I don't remember what he did, but I remember his name. He is a Libra born on October 31st, 1939, in Cincinnati to George and Sophia Carruthers. Let me see what he did. It says, when Carruthers was was young, the family lived in Evanston neighborhood before moving to Milford, Ohio. I guess it's supposed to be the bougie section because he ain't saying Cleveland and all the places that we know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he named, he named them high money places. Right. Because I ain't never heard of these places. I know it ain't the country. He don't look like he grew up in the country. Maybe. I don't know. It says, in 1964, he was a, uh, he, he completing his Ph.D., I'm sorry, in 1964, he completed his Ph.D. thesis. Carruthers was invited to give a colloquium talk at the United States Naval Research Laboratory. The year he became the first E.O. Hubert, Pro- oh, God, postdoctoral fellow funded by the National Science Foundation. In 1967, transitioned to a permanent position. Carruthers worked in space science division under Herbert Friedman. All these people from these times are be in space somehow. Have you noticed that? A lot of a lot of black history people that we do, mm. they involved with NASA or space satellites and all kinds of shit like that, inventing all kinds of shit. You don't want to know what I want what I think about that. What? No, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. What? No, no, I'm just it's <coughs> it is it is, I mean they need they need black people for stuff like this, but uh, but yeah. Just tell me what you're trying to say. I'm just saying black people got their place in the in it. We got to have our place in it. That's what I'm saying. It seemed like we did everything to me. And you could believe that too. <laughs> they we have our hand in every single thing for that, sure. That's what I'm and, and when you are when you are a secret part of the recipe, they can't get rid of you. You saying something? I, I I'm trying to tell you. I'll tell you something. You saying something? I want to continue learning, though. It says, in 1966, Carruthers built 
and in 1969 received a patent, they gave the patent number, for an image converter that turned images uh, made from light to very short wavelengths to electron images. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he took an analog thing and turned it digital. Mm -hmm. This enabled capturing an entire spectrum in a single exposure and was more robust than the traditional non-ultraviolet films because it used reflective cathodes rather than transmissive cathodes. Mm. You know what that is? Yeah, yeah. I literally just learned about these and uh, uh, learned about it in my um, computer class, my computer science class. So I, w I would imagine that reflective cathodes are faster than transmissive because... Re reflective means that's like a beam of light going mm -hmm. from right. place to place, right? Right. And whereas the other one is like more like wire. I'm I'm not. It, they don't go into that much detail. Transmissive about it. transmissive cathodes. Yeah, they don't go into that much into it, but they do tell you that you know there's the ones better. You know. Yeah. It says on the first test flight of the image converter in 1970, it captured a far ultraviolet spectrum, which was the first detection of molecular hydrogen in space. Oh, wow. Child, let me tell y'all something. Don't ever sleep on black folk. Listen, back when they be inventing so much dope shit, I can't even pronounce what it is half the time. I'll be like, wait a minute. Yeah, and you know <laughs> it's so crazy because all that is con they just they're they're discovering like uh stuff uh, in different galaxies because they can see these elements. Because you of know? this, what he yeah, did. Yeah, because of this, yeah. It says NASA in 2022 renamed the Global Lin Alpha. Um, alpha imager of the dynamic exposure mission knows, known as Glide to honor, to honor Carruthers. Let me read that again. That was a little <laughs> yeah, janky. Yeah. yeah, it says, in 2022, NASA renamed the Global Limb Alpha image of the direct dynamic <laughs> exposure <laughs> mission, also known as Glide to honor Carruthers. The mission was renamed to be the, to be the Carruthers okay, <laughs> observatory this mission included a launch in 2025 which will observe the earth's atmosphere in ultraviolet light then renaming ceremony took place on december 20 2022 at carruthers alma mater the university of illinois at urbana champagne Champagne. So when these brainiacs come around they always have a bunch of words that i can't say in these stories and shit Boy, yeah <laughs> But that's amazing, George Carruthers, what you did. I do understand exactly what you did. Now he's scanning the earth with ultraviolet light because of his invention in 2025. You know what? That sounds kind of scary, though. What do you mean? It could be beaming in on certain people and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, get someone so. You can just beam straight to them now. I feel like they ain't even got to do all that. They got our phones and everything. They don't even... It's, it's just too much, too much access to people and already in general, you know? 